In this video, we'll have a look at patch 101, and at the end, we'll have a look at what we know about patch 102 already. Let's get right into it. There are new versions of Akalath Quarantine, Red Refuge, Valix Sanctuary, Dracon Arena and the Training Ground. These new versions of the dungeons are called Dungeon Gauntlets and they give you several different options for the difficulty setting. Each difficulty has a recommended eye level and there's a drop rate bonus, which increases with the difficulty. The Adventure Coin cost also goes up though. For the new versions of Akalath Quarantine and Red Refuge, there is a weekly limit of 10 entries without and 20 with club membership. There is no entry limit for the Dracon Arena, Valix Sanctuary and Training Route Dungeon Gauntlets. In order to enter, you'll have to queue the versions that says Conquest behind the dungeon name. They are also marked with a light purple border in the matching window. If you use LFG or you already have a full party, then you need to teleport to the entrance as usual, but instead of clicking the teleport button, you have to click the dungeon gauntlet button to teleport. Make sure to set the difficulty before teleporting in. If you got in using instance matching, then you're first teleported to Valix Sanctuary, where you'll find the actual entrance to the dungeon. This is where you set the difficulty setting if you queued up. If you accidentally teleported into the wrong one, then you can use Unstuck to get back out and teleport back into the correct version. The dungeon itself has the same mechanics as the regular mode, but the bosses are tougher and deal a bit more damage. Both the boss toughness and strength scale with the level you chose. Patch 101 added some new cards, new collection effects, more slots for card presets and even a new card grade. Besides the common and uncommon cards, there are rare ones as well now. The addition of the new cards also means that it is possible to reach higher collection levels. The rewards for reaching a certain amount of card collection points have been changed, and some new rewards were added for reaching a certain point level between 10,500 and 23,500. The devs also added the possibility to fuse card fragments together. This means that you can now use fragments from cards that you already have completed and fuse them to get some other fragments instead. There are two ways to fuse them. You can either fuse four fragments of different cards but with the same rarity grade or you can fuse 20 fragments of the same card. Rare cards cannot be fused and event card fragments cannot be obtained in this way. When fusing four different ones together you will get one or more fragments of at least the same grade as the ones you've used for the fusion. If this fusion fails, then you will only get some mileage points instead of fragments. 1000 of these points can be traded for 20 tokens, which can then be used to buy specific cards. There is a high chance of failure when attempting to fuse 20 fragments of the same type together. However, if the fusion is successful, then you will get between 10 and 20 fragments of a rarity grade higher than the ones you used. A few dungeon bosses had their classification changed so that they are affected by some of the new card collection effects. Resurrected Dakurion in Valex Sanctuary and Antaroth in Antaroth's Abyss are now classified as gods. The bosses in Gossama Vault as well as the second and last boss in Thor Metal Refinery are now magical creatures, and the bosses in the three versions of Forbidden Arena are now classified as ancestors. The Battleground leaderboard now only lets you keep your rank if you played at least three rounds within the past week. This is checked every Thursday. The patch notes mention some changes to the battleground called Underground Battle Pit. I've never seen a battleground with that name, so I assume they mean Gridiron. Anyway, it is now a 5v5 battleground and each round only lasts 5 minutes. The rewards have been reduced by 30% and they changed the positioning of some battleground elements. Corsair's Stronghold 
now has some new skills for the team leaders, but the patch does not specify which ones that is. The snowball fight battleground called Winterra is online, and there are some nice items you can get by farming the tokens. You can find the event merchant in Highwatch, near the Vanguard Crystal Merchant and Quartermaster. One minute into the match, Santa Thieves will spawn in the middle of the map. Those can drop a bunch of different items. Valex Sanctuary now has a low chance to drop Lakan's weapon skin for Lancers. Lakan's cape, which is not class locked, can drop as well. There are also some new tokens which you can use to get Lakan's costume, as well as some other items. Dracon Arena, both normal mode and hard mode, can now drop a rare or superior partner as bonus loot. Castle Scorch was removed, and loot drops for a bunch of dungeons, as well as open world, were changed. When entering Commander's Residence, the adventure coins are now collected right away, and the entry is counted without starting the fight as well. The boss will also only be summoned once all 20 players have entered. The contents of the Triumph Token Exchange Shop, Traveling Merchant, Balcarium Shop and the Reputation Shops have been updated. Harrowhold, Phase 3 and 4 got a bit easier and there are some additional loot drops. There were also some improvements made to the server communication in dungeons as well as the character selection animation. Patch 102 will be released at the beginning of 2021 and the new Battle Arena game mode will be removed when that patch goes live. There are some rumors going around saying that there will be new gear sets in patch 102 as well. I don't know if the next patch is already live in the Korean version of Terra, because I didn't find any translated patch notes yet, so I couldn't verify if this is true. It would make sense though, since Kaya gear has been out for a while already. I was told that in patch 102, players will get a set of Kaya gear from the Apex skill story quest, and that the new gear set can be obtained by upgrading plus 15 Kaya gear. If that is the case, then I would assume that making and enchanting Kaya gear will become easier and cheaper as well. As I said, this is only rumor so far, so I cannot tell you if it is still worth working on Kaya gear right now, or if it's better to just wait until next patch. I also don't know when exactly the next patch will go live, but usually there is a new major patch about every month or two, so Kterra should get the patch 102 soon if they don't have it yet. Well, that's it for this video. You can find the links to most of the information I mentioned in this video in the description below. Let me know your thoughts on the new patch in the comment section. And if you have any questions, those are welcome as well. By the way, I started streaming on Twitch, so you can also drop in there if you want and ask questions directly in chat. I did three live streams on Twitch so far and I really enjoyed it, so I decided to keep streaming every Wednesday and Sunday at 9pm UTC. On Sundays I play Terra, and on Wednesdays I play different games. For example, last Wednesday I played Brawlhalla with a friend and a couple of viewers. And next Wednesday I will play Magic the Gathering Arena. I haven't played Magic the Gathering in years, so this should be fun. To those of you who were watching my live streams in the past two weeks, thanks for being there. I did not expect anybody to watch, so it was a pleasant surprise. Anyway, leave a like if you want me to keep making videos like this one when new patches go live, and subscribe for more. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.